St. Alphonsus, he says that God keeps us here alive on this earth for no other purpose than to bear the cross. That is the only reason we are here. We lost that entitlement, if you will, when Adam and Eve had sinned to merit our eternal reward by enjoying ourselves in this life. Since the sin of Adam and Eve, we now must merit eternal life by suffering. And our Lord says that if we want any part with him, then we must deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. And yet, we constantly seek to avoid our crosses, to spend enormous amounts of time and energy to do so. The world, well, it holds out pleasures of all sorts. Our present-day culture is a culture of self-indulgence and and the fact that we are not, we shouldn't have to give in to what others want. It's what we want. No apologies for that. The flesh, well, it seeks to pamper itself, indulging in excesses of all sorts. And the devil, well, he promises a life in which Christ is detached from the cross. No longer there. It's a, it's a life without suffering. Do you remember that scene in the gospel where our Lord is speaking to his apostles of his coming sufferings. And St. Peter, in all of his goodwill and love for our Savior, says there must be another way, and we'll make sure of it, Lord, so that you do not have to suffer. And our Lord turned to him sternly and said, Get thee behind me, Satan. He called Peter Satan on that occasion, because Satan wants us to be separated from the cross, because he knows in the cross is our salvation. And yet, we, we try all the day long to avoid our crosses. When our Lord said, I must carry mine, for your souls depend on it. My Father's glory depends on it. And to refuse this cross, O Peter, would be a terrible mistake. Now, let it be noted in, before I go on that the crosses of which I am speaking, they're not merely the, the ones that you can't avoid, the ones that providence sends to you, such as sickness or bad weather, or anything like that, the things that you cannot change. But by crosses, I also mean the ones that we impose upon ourselves, ourselves, penitential practices, fasting, praying more frequently, not complaining when you would feel like doing so, giving something up, fighting against your predominant passion, which is the passion that threatens to bring your soul down. These are the necessary fights, or rather the crosses, that we must, we must carry. The avoidance of sin, the avoidance of the occasions of sin. If only more people would take that cross upon their shoulders, how much peace they would have in this world. The cross of avoiding the occasions that lead them into sin. If people were to turn off the televisions and the computers that were a source of sin for them, how little sin there would be in this life of ours. That's a cross that must be borne. And the saints, well, they understood why the cross just has to be. 
St. Thomas of Villanova said, It is a sign of God's love to me, a sign of future salvation, when the Lord gives me to drink of the cup of suffering. He is here speaking about those crosses that he must endure passively. He must simply accept them with patience. St. John of the Cross took on many crosses, Actively, you might say. He imposed them upon himself. Before he was even nine years old, today's saint, John of the Cross, was already imposing severe fasts upon himself. And he would take only short amounts of rest, and that on a very hard bed. And as a student, He did something which is pretty much gone today. He would go to the different hospitals to visit the sick, doing the corporal works of mercy. That act of mercy is pretty much gone today. It's a sad thing because our Lord has promised a very great promise, and it's even mentioned in sacred scripture, to those who visit the sick. That might be a good Advent resolution. But in any case, when he was a Carmelite, he was an example to all when it came to penitential practices. And when he was counseled to lessen his penance, do you know what his response was? It wasn't nearly as stern as our Lord's to St. Peter, but he said, the narrow path leading to heaven cannot be traveled by me in a manner less austere. He knew that the cross that he inflicted on himself was his path to salvation, and without it, he would not make it. The cross. In other words, the cross was sweet to both our Lord and his saints. Think of it this way. Our Lord could find no cross in heaven. So he came to earth for the very purpose of finding a cross. And when he found just the one that he wanted, he embraced it. He placed it on his own shoulder and he bore it up Mount Calvary. And it was his final, it was his deathbed, if you will, in which he shed all of his blood for the love of man. He couldn't find it in heaven, so he sought it on earth. And the saints, they loved the cross and sought it out in imitation of our Lord, not because they loved pain, not because it was easy for them to endure it, not because they were weird or strange or anything like that, but because they knew that we were meant to merit heaven by the bearing of the cross. Is it any wonder then that the world is constantly, even our well-intentioned family members, are constantly trying to tell us, well, you're doing too much, and put pleasure and, and indulgence before you instead. It's true now. All this being said, One can never completely avoid the cross here in this life. Try as you will. You cannot avoid it. But there will come a time when everyone who has ever tried to avoid it will come face to face with the cross. As it says in today's gospel, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man. This sign will precede the general judgment, the end of the world, when the angel of judgment shall come down and he will sound his trumpet so loudly that all the billions and billions of souls that ever existed will hear it. It will be such a loud sound that it will penetrate to the very depths of your grave and your body 
although already corrupt, will obey the summons of that angel, and it will rise from its grave. It will be glorious and beautiful if you have been mortified in this life. It will be hideous and deformed if you have pampered it and lived in mortal sin. And then the eternal gates, well, they swing open for a moment, the eternal gates of heaven, and those regions of light will be seen, and they will see that heaven is truly a place of joy and of eternal happiness. And you will see coming from heaven, descending peacefully, the souls of the just who are accompanied by their guardian angels, and they will go into the valley of Josephat to be judged before all. And then the the eternal gates of hell swing open. And what a different scene. You will see the souls of the damned suffering so much in the clutches of the demons being dragged to the place of judgment. And all these souls will see the sign of the Son of Man, the sign of the cross in the sky. And those who denied the cross, who spurned it, well, the Book of Wisdom says, and they seeing it will be troubled with a terrible fear. But when the just see it, they'll see in it a friend. They've been with it all their life. They've embraced it and cherished it and carried it everywhere they went. It's nothing new to them. It was the cause of their salvation. So what will it be for you? Now, in ending this sermon, some practical points for each one of you. And don't take it lightly. Advent is coming next week. And sure, there will be crosses to endure that God will send to you. Bear them. But then what crosses will you impose upon yourself? Are you going to let these three and four weeks of Advent, preparation for Christmas, pass by as you attend party after party and gathering after gathering and doing all of your shopping? Or will you make it a point to prepare yourselves spiritually, to work on that sin that you never worked on before, but which is keeping you out of the grace of God? Will you give more time to prayer and reflection on the state of your soul and the glory of God? Or will all your thoughts be given to worldly pleasures? There is so much that we can do during Advent. Will you give alms? Many, I've noticed, are not even keeping up with their weekly tithing. Some who have jobs give no tithing at all. Maybe start there with the fulfillment of of duties. Will you volunteer at church? We're always looking for new people, young people particularly, to help with different things. The grocery shopping for the priests so that when we come in at the last minute before Mass, we don't need to go out and grocery shop. Instead, we can go on sick calls and do the the other things that matter, or cleaning of the, the rectory yard, or any of these other duties, that the cleaning of the church that need to be done. These are all good penances to impose upon yourselves. Let us then look for the cross, during this Advent season. And then when it appears to us at the end of times, it will be an old friend. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.